We have a uh, budget review from the Department of Planning and Economic Development. Uh, directors here to present, or along with uh, my our Apple's standard finance brief director. Overview. So the budget is for the Planning Department is on page C51 of the budget. The total budget for uh, 2018 that's being recommended by the Executive's Office is just shy of 3.5 million. It's 3,491,000. It's about a $93,000 increase over the prior year. Um, there's essentially two um, big things going on, I guess, for lack of a, a more formal term. Um, there's a pos one position being added to the budget. It's an associate planner position and a total cost of just shy of $82,000, including uh, benefits and a $40,000 increase in contract services, which is being earmarked for a countywide parks and recreation master plan. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? With that, I so contract services increased forty thousand. That's going to be that's earmarked to be spent on a countywide parks and recreation master plan. JP can go into uh, far more detail on that line item than I. And there's also um, th they're adding one position. It's an associate planner position for a cost of just shy of eighty two thousand. Uh, there's a small increase in conferences and training of about 2,500, about an $8,000 increase in supplies and services, which is online services and some local travel mileage, essentially. So with that, I'll turn it over to JP. Did anyone have any questions of what uh, uh, Director Schmiegel had to say? Um, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, good. Commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present uh, the uh, fiscal year 2018 budget from Planning and Economic Development. Uh, aside from a handful of commissioners, some other directors, and the Office of the County Executive, I was told I have five minutes. So uh, here we go. Uh, main thing that we're looking at as far as our uh, proposed budget, uh, when we look first and foremost at positions, uh, as uh, uh, Director Smeagol highlighted, uh, the new position is the associate planner. We are targeting that uh, position to be embedded in our communications and outreach group. Uh, we're looking not only at increase in, in our intergovernmental coordination on major planning and economic development projects related to the continuation of our F-35 efforts and a lot of the outreach and coordination we're doing with career technical education, not only doing more standardized programming and um, highlighting of a lot of the um, uh, CTE programs and talent development programs, but also looking at the whole notion how we're developing those collateral materials and por portals to highlight these services and opportunities here in the county. I think it's done an incredible service to establish a better working rapport with our institutional partners on the educational side and is actually opening up doorways to a number of the companies that are looking to invest in the county. This is something that we've really been challenged by our private sector partners and opening up these channels not only through standard communication outreach and coordination is giving us the ability to really deploy a set of services and a more viable link to our economic development services which is providing us with some great dividends on the interdepartmental side it's also going to provide us more opportunities to standardize the communication services that we're providing for departments in the county not only deploying things whether it be brand standards and communications task force but providing resources and tools whether it be a press release app that we're developing in coordination with IT also looking at the whole notion of the way that we develop a, a, a unified brand similar to the types of efforts that our friends over in Oakland County and Kent County have been able to deploy and really getting that image and really upping the game on that front. We're also looking at a reclassification for two associate planners in our department. In continual talks with Human Resources and um, uh, our friends over at Finance, we're looking at establishing the parameters for an employee retention and professional development tract. Uh, understanding that retention and ensuring that we can solicit solidify the professionals that we have in our department to continue to grow and remain committed to some of these more long-term projects. We looked at the whole notion of how to incentivize individuals to get those professional certifications that are viewed as benchmarks in the fields of planning, economic development, GIS, and graphic design to kind of highlight a few of those things. We've highlighted a number of those professional service, professional uh, certifications and advanced degrees that we have be a benefit not only to work that we're doing, but would give us the ability to bring a lot of those services that we've deployed traditionally through contractual services, but keep those services more in-house as we have more AICP planners, if we have more economic developers that are certified by the International Economic Development Council, which gives us those opportunities. 
On the operating expenses, as Steve highlighted, a few minimal increases. Online services is the highest one of note as we're looking to expand the utilization of our online databases and client management systems. We've really begun to automate and digitize a lot of the way that we're not only engaging clients but disseminating resources, whether it be from incentives that we provide or tailor-made portals where we can highlight, here are the services that our department provides, here are the resources that you can get from the state of Michigan, here's some workforce development elements, and as we've not only built those tools in conjunction with our friends over at IT, we really feel that we're cornering the market on a streamlined approach to disseminating the services that we provide in our department and how they directly impact business investment around the county, and we're really proud of those things. Out-of-state travel, uh, a big uh, the increase there is primarily from the fact we go on again, off again with our GIS user conference. Uh, our friends over at Esri are um, uh, pretty stubborn. They only have their conference in San Diego, and we cut it back to going once every other year, so just looking for a, a slight increase there to to cover that cost. And then conferences and seminars are going to offset uh, the coverage for those professional associations and continuing uh, education credits as we look at that credentialing program. The last big ticket item uh, that I wanted to highlight was our contractual services line item. Over the past two years, we've discussed with this board as this kind of being the programmatic fund for our budget, highlighting a number of priorities from each one of the work groups. This year, the increase in this fund comes from the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. The reason we're asking for that increase is every five years under the Department of Natural Resources guidelines for parks, recreation, and open space, space planning, we need to update our plan. By updating the plan, we would make it the ability for us to draw down funds from not only the Department of Natural Resources, but obviously the DQ and other recreational related programming at the state level. This would not only ensure that we're up to the grant standards, but would be able to refresh and provide a more contemporary framework for where parks and recreation lies in Macomb County. We've itemized the rest of the funds and other initiatives that we're looking to chart out in the contractual services line item. And with that, I will yield to any questions. Well, thank you, um, JP. Um, the, what that, the, the new position that you want to bring on, what is the plan specifically for him to coordinate with the, the schools and the CTEs and the employers? What model are you going to use to, to you know, it's, it's a broad area. There's been a lot of talk about, yes, you know, the need to get more CTA kids in, this, in the workplace and, and how to do that. And there's a variety of models. What's, how are we going to fit into that piece? All the credit for this programming falls to Maria Zardes, who's our program manager of communications and outreach. Essentially, what we've built is a model that branches out from our National Manufacturing Day celebration. Because of that outreach, we've been able to establish standard relationships with each one of the 21 school districts in Macomb County and the MISD. On a regular basis, we are working at a task force level that brings in not only all of the superintendents, but also counselors and teachers to explore CT programming on an ongoing basis and understand any deficiencies in career exploration and career pathways. Beyond that, on the economic development level, with our economic development staff being deployed in the field, meeting with no less than 400 Macomb companies every single year, we are pushing the whole notion of talent development and career technical education and linking employers to the educational field. What that has done is that has given us the ability to not only incubate creative ideas, whether it be uh, uh, apprenticeship programming, whether it be academy-based programming, which is giving kids in virtually every single school district in the county the ability to go in and see what manufacturing looks like, to see what professional services looks like, to look at a career pathway and exploration. And then we are now taking it to the next step where we're doing um, more work on the curriculum-based level. We're working uh, right now with Romeo Community Schools on Ford Next Generation Learning which is a full academy-based learning program that they're going to deploy over the next two years as they ramp up for the new high school in 2019. Myself and Vicki Rad have been working with uh, the superintendent's office and all of the teachers at the high school where we're not only going in and looking at occupations in our county, but we're also tracking emergence, emerging industry trends, trying to say, if a kid comes to you and says they want to be an engineer, what does that mean? How do they explore that okay. career, and how can we link them to companies here in the county? The other part of this that is instrumental is the ISD. The MASD and Mike DeVault has been an amazing partner that has given us the ability to not only engage the educators, but more importantly, advocate at a higher level, whether it's at the state or federal level, for additional funding. So the new position will be going to support that initiative 100%? Uh, a portion of those responsibilities would be to supporting Maria's efforts Would that there. be a promotion internally to move someone into that spot? And then, I mean, how is that going to work internally? Personally, 
creating this new position or hire this, so you're going to promote somebody from within, or do you, has that been determined yet? We'll probably look externally as we look at opening up uh, some of the um, uh, credentials as bringing those individuals in. And that raises the next question. You're creating a, a, a new um, incentive program for getting more certifications in your department. But in the end, it's, uh, you know, it's, those are great because we've got talented people in that department, and but the, they also have to be tied to their union uh, wages and so forth like that. And, and getting skills is one thing, but having money is another thing too. How is that going to work with our, even contact with our labor unions to make sure that they're coordinating with them in terms of how that all works to give additional, because like in the schools, you get a, you get incentivized to go get higher mass higher education degrees you get more money for that uh, we've been working extensively with both human resources and IT to understand that we follow all labor practices and that we have the necessary resources we want these to not only be certified justifications based off of the recommendations that we bring to this board but more importantly each certification comes from a credentialed element in the field of practice so it's just not we're saying hey go sit in this classroom for eight hours and get this certificate we're talking about national standards as far as how we can be better planners in the field how we can be better economic developers and that are viewed as industry leading certifications and then most importantly would follow all labor practices and rules here at the county does your organization have enough breathing space to allow people to move up as they as their skills warrant themselves i mean are, are, are we with this recommendation that we're bringing to the board and with the changes that we're discussing with human resources with the class and compensation study i believe that we are going to have not only the necessary leeway to provide individuals with those professional development opportunities mm -hmm. but more importantly we're going to look at the whole notion of career development within our department okay. so it's just not someone coming in and saying okay you're only going to be an associate planner or you're only going to be a graphic designer or you're only going to be a senior planner but as we can allow people to grow into these fields I think that retention has done an incredible service to our department, as is evident by a lot of the program managers that we have on our team right now. Okay. And the Parks Master Plan, it, it's to be rewritten. Um, when do we expect that completed by? Our objective would be, uh, should we receive the funding, we would... would should we begin to get the assumption that we're gonna receive the funding for the board, we would start drafting not only the contractual services items that we would look to do to bring in an external contractor to assist with that, but we'd also be looking at what we could deploy internally, whether it's not only through our department, obviously we would work with other internal partners, whether it be the public works, whether it be the Department of Roads, and whether it be facilities and operations to see what we could offset internally. The key objective with this is, is there's been changes not only into the DNR structure and the way that we can access funding, but there's also been other avenues of funding whether it's the iron bell trail network and we really want to standardize a lot of those programmatic buckets to better make it so that we can access those dollars whether it be for acquisition development or special projects so setting up a master plan it'll tailor make to integrate with our local communities as well as what we're doing they'll set the groundwork for these grant applications yes sir the master plan is not a it's not the way to get that. It's, it's, it's a tool to get access to the money when we make applications, right? Absolutely. So ultimately what it would do is if we would be able to finalize the plan in this next calendar year, we would make it so there wouldn't be a gap in that. Uh, if, we if we complete the plan, which we feel that we undoubtedly will, in that calendar year, it will make sure it will be seamless and then we can uh, continue to apply for DNR trust fund grants as a county alone or in joint applications with our communities as we've done year over year. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Uh, Questions from the committee? Um, don't, I don't see anybody here. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so in the contract services, um, we went, we have a 2017 actual, which is just like a halfway through the year. But what we don't have is the original um, 2017 budget. So the 2017 that says am amended, that says that for every department. D Steve, do you know, did we actually do any amending from our original budget? Or you know what I mean? That actual is just halfway through the year. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, the original budget was 300000 Okay. So. Okay, so when we went from... 2016 114 to 2017 291 were any of those one-time projects because did you talk to us last year about any one-time projects 
Uh, we, I know we added 100,000 for Protect and Grow, which JP is requesting to continue. Okay, so, so that then that it's not a one time, that's a continuing yeah. on, you wanna continue on with. Okay, so with respect to the 340, if, if the 340, if the 40 is for the master plan or the increase is for the master plan, um, why is it calculated into two, uh, 2019 and 2020 as well? There were a number of other requests that JP made to be added to the contractual services that we didn't add into 2018 that he wants to, that we're funding or proposing to fund in the 19 and 20. Well, and then so come next year, it'll just look like nothing changed from our perspective. You, you, Correct. So that just, that happens frequently where we'll have a one-time project, but then the, the dollars for that one-time project consist in future years, that it doesn't go away. And that's not this, that's not this department. I don't want you to think that. I'm just saying generally speaking. So um, the, my last question with respect to that is, um, the next agenda item is, um, is um, parks and recreation. Why isn't the parks and recreation master plan in the parks and recreation budget instead of in the planning budget? So, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we are the Department of Planning and Economic Development. There is not a parks and recreation department. Uh, no one currently works there. As we've discussed this, uh, not only with Steve, but with the Office of the County Executive, uh, as we're looking at developing a strategy for parks and recreation, our department historically has been the department that has drafted all of these documents using the skills and abilities of our office to develop these countywide strategies. So the simplest way to say it is there's no one else to do it but us, and we're glad to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, JP, for being here today. Appreciate uh, it. My question was either going to be for the Office of County Exec or yourself, and you're here first, so I'm going to ask you. Um, I want to thank you for breaking down the contracts uh, for this year, but my question is what I'm not seeing on here, and I don't know if you're the right department, is uh, make Macomb your home. Is that under you? Is that under the Office of the County Exec? I've gone through the whole budget, and I don't see that anywhere, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering where that is is that you is that the county executive is that somewhere totally different who has responsibility over that so there are two line items currently in our budget that we are deploy for uh, marketing promotions and advertising one of the line items is marketing promotions that has traditionally been used to leverage any type of programming that highlights make macomb your home quality of life uh, engagement outreach with the whole notion of celebrating the county the assets that it has and dovetailing that into a lot of the program that we do in planning and economic development as it's related to parks and recreation as it's related to land and water resources as it's related to educational institutions and career development type things. The other line item is the advertising line item that is in our budget is to advertise the business development services, the planning services that our department utilizes. And uh, both of those uh, have been leveraged out of uh, our department in planning and economic development um, to uh, help celebrate those things we have in the county. So is that under, from what I get to see, is that under supplies and services? Uh, hold please. Yes. Is it? Okay. Okay, thank you, JP. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, JP. Appreciate it. Um, just looking from a, a raw number perspective, if we looked at the 2015 budget, it was about 2.7 uh, million, and then you know this year we're projecting out to what 3.5 million. It's a about a 30 percent increase in a few years. How would I explain to my next door neighbor if he came up to me and said, hey, how come their budget's gone up 30% and mm -hmm. my income hasn't gone up 30%? Or how do we know we're getting 30% more value in four years? Do we track that in uh, our unemployment rate McCone, compared to others in, in, in Michigan? Do we track the number of new businesses increasing per year compared to the United States new businesses increasing? Yes, how do we know, you know uh, that it's 30% better? I not only appreciate the question, but I frankly appreciate the challenge. 
uh, we're metrics driven now. Not only with the amount of client interactions that we've had, the major thing that we look at the whole notion of the drastic changes at our budget is this is the first time that we've been fully staffed in three years. So that increase has happened when we look at not only bringing individuals, but bringing individuals that have been filled in management level positions and then other positions that have been created through reclassifications. The other thing is we look at the whole notion of being fully staffed is the impact that we've had at the county. Last year alone, the ability to meet with 484 companies, which was an all-time high. Our unemployment rate sits at 3.2%. Last year alone, our department helped create 4,100 direct jobs, which was also an all-time high. Currently, right now, our department is working on two of the largest economic development initiatives in the county's entire history. So if your neighbor were to ask you that, not only can you competently say that the department's doing more, but frankly, I think the department's working as optimally as it can. The other thing that I would like to say is, is when you look at the whole notion of staffing, which I know this board has discussed quite openly, we are below pre-recession level still. At an all-time high, our department had, I believe, about 34 employees. We currently sit at 25 employees. So we've not only optimized operations, but we're really looking at the whole notion of how we're deploying services in each one of those program groups. It is imperative that we not only remain <coughs> metrics driven, but at the same time understanding that every single interaction we have, whether it's a community figuring out what it is that they wanna be when they grow up to meeting with a company, that there needs to be an objective. And not only with the contractual services that we would laid out, but with the staff that we bring out, it's very much metrics driven now more than ever. I think you know, it's always difficult to quantify what, you know, what part of the unemployment rate is related to you know, what, what somebody said or did and so forth. So it's very always difficult to, one of the biggest challenges to fight is to figure out what metrics matter and Absolutely. how to isolate them and so forth. Uh, so I, you know, I don't know if it's um, if there's a way to look at companies that you've met with that have located in Macomb County uh, compared to I don't know uh, companies that have located we haven't met with or something. I, it's hard to mm -hmm. it's hard to know, and, it, and it's difficult in that you know I I, I respect the challenge that that you have to find a way to grapple with because mm -hmm. you know. Some people might say, well, how do we know these companies are located here? Or maybe the employment rate's lower, but it's, uh, it's lower across the country and lots across the state. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's difficult. Um, so I would, I would encourage you, to, because it is going to be tough you know, for me to explain, well, yeah, the budget went up 30%. That's, Absolutely. That's a, a big increase, and then they want you know, another person, uh, mm -hmm. and it's going to you know, go up more. So the more that we can get as far as tangible results that I can explain to my next-door neighbor, <laughs> you know, the easier it is. Absolutely, Commissioner. And when we were up here a few months ago kind of giving you the overview and everything, that presentation, which was part of the public record, had a number of those metrics which we're not only tracking. One of the other things that we're doing is we're also opening up these portals to the public. So not only can you get detailed information on all the projects that we're currently engaged in and working on, whether it's through uh, Make Macomb Your Home, which highlights a number of our quality of life assets and initiatives, our Macomb Business Portal, which we're currently revamping, and our economic development maps. All these things are not only open to the public, but are providing detailed metrics as far as what's happening in our community. Well, uh, just take Make Macomb Your Home, for example. Yes. How do we know that's quote unquote worked, how, what's, how do you measure that? I'll give you the simplest metric. Every single day there are 23,000 individuals that are engaging content through Make Macomb Your Home. Whether it's the number of hits we get on the website, whether it's the number of followers we have on social media, whether it's the number of shares we get from our blog. These are people that are actively celebrating things happening in Macomb County. And I understand that we're talking about a brand and a moniker and what's the value of that. It is providing us dividends. It is something that is not only opening up a portal to showcase people the assets that we have here, but it's dovetailing nicely into what we're developing in economic development. It's not a just about coming here and seeing what's nice and pretty on a glossy brochure, but it's actually backing it up with substance that say, if you choose to make your home here, whether it's bringing your family here or bringing your business home here, there are definitive locational advantages Manages here in Macomb County, and it's something that's mattering when we're in a lot of these discussions with clients. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, JP. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank, you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, JP. How are we doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Doing good. Good. Um, first, let's go to planning. Uh, how many communities are we uh, contracted with right now? Currently, right now, we have two communities that we have uh, a retainer-based contract. It is the village of New Haven, and it's the city of Utica. As we stand here today, we are in talks with the city of Centerline to comp do a comprehensive rewrite of their Parks and Recreation Master Plan uh, for a fee. 
We are also in talks and have been working with the city of Richmond on finalizing their downtown plan and doing all the community outreach and engagement for their um, uh, comprehensive master plan. The other thing that I'm incredibly proud of right now and want to give a tremendous amount of so, uh, credit to MCA is we're in the process of negotiating being the contractor of record for the assessment for fair housing for the entire county. This would be a 14 month process where we will literally explore every single element of housing and demographic changes in the county to not only better position us to get additional hunt funding through HUD, but would also better prepare us for the census coming up. Those contractual services on the planning side are growing by leaps and bounds and are giving us a preeminent opportunity to really impress upon the locals how we can service them. Another area that this board supported last year that is giving us tremendous inroads with the communities is industrial zoning. Right now we are working on developing a series of industrial zoning standards that are going to streamline the way that we permit and site industrial tenants across the county. This dovetails nicely into our economic development services and will give us assurances on what we're doing as far as locating potential clients on that end. Okay, great. Are we actively looking uh, and reaching out to other communities for um, to provide those contractual services? Yes, are, sir. Are we um, still uh, offering it if they want to uh, have the county do their planning? On a quarterly basis, we bring together all the chief decision makers with regards to planning and economic development for each one of our communities. At those meetings, we continually highlight the fact that we have contractual planning services at a free and discounted rate that can aid them in modernizing their planning, zoning, and economic development procedures. Okay, great. Um, now on uh, uh, moving on to economic development. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Years ago, I went to uh, uh, the ICSC uh, conference and I I think I went like three years in a row. And there was a section there that they actually had uh, government. Uh, and they actually had booths set up where municipal or counties were there trying to solicit people to come to their counties from all over the country. Um, and I know we go to uh, conferences and stuff, but are we marketing ourselves at these conferences, setting up our own booth and showing them your Macomb, you know, make Macomb your home, showing them what we do to try to get those, you know, at their conferences? We are doing that? Absolutely. Um, so the best way that I can say this is this really builds on our partnership model. Um, if we go to a trade show, whether it's uh, domestic or international, uh, probably one of the best examples that I could give you is Hanover Mesa, which is the largest manufacturing trade show in the entire world. If Macomb County goes by himself and sits up in a booth, we're going to get lost in the shuffle. But we are looking at a partnership-based model where now we go with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. We go with uh, our friends over at Automation Alley. And in that consortium, we not only are able to celebrate what's happening in Macomb County, but we have a little bit more punching power. When you go with the state of Michigan, when you're there with a business development rep that has a giant checkbook from the state of Michigan full of incentives, that'll get a company to sit down with you. The other thing that's currently coming up here is we're going to be going to the AUSOA trade trade show in Washington, D.C., which is one of the largest military trade shows in the world. What we've historically done here is the same partnership-driven model where we're actively not only showcasing what's happening in the county, but we're going with the Michigan Defense Center under the banner of Protect and Grow. So we're not only trying to figure out what are the best ways that we can use the resources that we have, but we're trying to take that dollar and stretch it even more by saying, hey, MEDC, you're paying for the booth space already. We're going to set up a section where we can talk about Macomb County. We're going to set up economic development meetings together. We're going to go with business development reps and target these companies or target these entities. Industries. It's one of those things that we've definitely refined over the years. I think it's going to give us an opportunity to showcase some other things as we look at not only refining some of those resources, excuse me, discretionary resources that we get from the state through the Collaborative Development Council of the MEDC and working more closely with even folks at the Detroit Regional Chamber on those efforts too. Great. Um, now, um, to jump over to uh, you were asked a question about the park and rec budget. Yes, sir. I would strongly uh, suggest that you get back with the Office of County Executive and Steve and sit down and uh, maybe you contract those services from that uh, line item. And the reason why I say that is to show the funds being uh, dispersed from that line item for when we do go for park and recreation millages or whatever it is, that we have a line item that we're actually putting money in to show that maybe it can be some match money or whatever it is that we're actually spending it on certain projects. So I, I'm not an accountant, but I think that's something that may benefit us in the long run, showing the funds in that account. And then you can say we're spending X amount of dollars on park and recreation. If we don't show it in there, it doesn't show that you're spending that money. So I think that's something you guys may want to, before this budget's submitted, 
to really take a look at it and maybe put that money back in there and then just contract it from uh, your department. So um, the last thing I have for you is that, you know, um, I personally in uh, my business life as a resident and as a commissioner seen a lot of the programs you guys are doing. And um, you've even sat down with some friends of mine that own businesses here trying to get them to stay here in Macomb County. And I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm, uh, I'm happy in the direction in which you guys are going. Um, and um, I just have to ask you this though, with all the great things that you're doing to try to bring new businesses here, years ago we had to switch the gear over to try to retain them and trying to keep them here. Um, I don't wanna lose that in the shuffle. And do you guys have something where we're still not only reaching for the new, but hang on to what we got. What are we doing to hang on to what we got still? Retention is the foundation of our economic development services. The vast majority of meetings that we have are what we refer to as retention meetings. Those are with local Macomb County companies that we are calling on a continual basis. Those leads not only come from the services and connections that obviously you have as commissioners, but are generated by the local communities where we're not only making those community connections, but we're focused on a community-driven economy here. Those that have made Macomb their home are the greatest opportunity that we have to expand those business investments, keep those workers here, and look at the way that we optimize our local economy. We very much understand the importance of retention and in no way, shape, or form are going to move away from that model. Okay. And just to share with the board, I had an individual who owns a company and they wanted to, uh, they have options of where they were going to go build a place. And they were able to bring up all the available property and show him in Macomb County where he could move to and what was currently available in future. Now, to be able to do that, I mean, if you don't get the chance to see that firsthand, <coughs> I just happen to be sitting in that meeting. It's pretty impressive. I wanted to open up a new business in Macomb. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to echo a little bit of what Commissioner Carabelli said. I, I do, uh, I'm very impressed with your department. I had an opportunity to go to your seminar that you had, and I thought that uh, some of the metrics that uh, Commissioner Drolette was worried about they were presented at that uh, seminar, and, I, and, and just as you presented it to us early on when we first came here as new commissioners, and I think that's very important. And I think we're seeing, some, you know, I think there's a lot of things going on in Macomb, mm -hmm. and there's still a few things we're going to still find out that you can see your department's doing excellent, excellent work at that. And appreciate I, I really that. appreciate that, and I appreciate the line item breakdown on the contracts as well. That's uh, helpful. And so I have a question with regard to that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Blue Economy Strategic Plan. So we had the Bassmasters Elite. That was great. What other things are forecast? for 2018 with the $15,000 budgeted for that. Did I leave that? Hold on. I should bring less paper next time. Blue Economy Strategic Plan. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we have done this year out of the um, uh, strategic plan is we are bringing in all of the major stakeholders associated with our Blue and Greenways economy, trying to figure out how we're optimizing the programming through our Land and Water Resources Division. All of those findings, which we have done uh, now, I believe we have done four stakeholder meetings and have also done a full-scale assessment of all of the local parks and recreation and preservation related programs in the county are going to be the foundation of the rewrite for the parks and recreation master plan so the thought was to set a series of strategic goals and objectives that are going to be the driving force for the programmatic asks in the master plan so what we what we wanted to do this year is see what was the missing middle we do not want to duplicate any services on the parks and recreation side. We're not going to run Little League and we're not going to operate Stony Creek. But when we look at the same way that other counties, whether it be Oakland and their generational commitment to parks and rec, but some more models when we look at St. Clair County and some of the assessment that the board has done, trying to understand how do they have you know, this resource sharing model where they're collecting a millage and dispersing it. We're discussing all those models, all those different programmatic um, frameworks with the stakeholders. Um, one of the things that's been really encouraging is the whole notion of the emergence of health, community service, and wellness in this, and how we've really been trying to key into a lot of those institutions, whether it be on the healthcare side, the wellness side, the active living side. Those are some of the other inroads that also open up some funding at the state level. So when we look at that strategic framework that we've been building this year, those strategic goals and objectives are going to be the foundation for when we move forward and say, okay, what are the intricate programmatic asks? What's the administrative structure we could have together? And then how do we incentivize those that are currently 
currently offering parks and recreation services in this county because we do not want to replace or duplicate any of those commitments at this time. So I guess you're saying that anything that has to do with blue water, uh, blue economy strategic planning, uh, would go in, in line with what we're doing with parks and recs? Absolutely. Okay. I think it's imperative, and here's why. When we look at the natural resources that we have and we look at the way that those programmatic elements have been developed under the DNR and those trust fund dollars, if we can make those correlations, it'll make us more competitive in their grant scoring system when we look at those projects. There's a whole nother track on the economic development side where we're continually looking at opportunities, whether it's water quality, whether it's water-related technologies, the fact that we have shoreline and waterfront property is pretty nice advantage to have so we're continually looking at that angle too okay thanks jp thanks for the good work really appreciate it appreciate really it. appreciate what your department does thank you thank you mr chair you're welcome next is the commissioner smith chairman smith thank you uh, jp thanks for your presentation um, very understandable as always um, I, I have two things. One, I just have a question as in regard to the, the $40,000 for that master plan for the Parks and Rec. I, I, I think I remember seeing that, that Parks and Rec actually has a pretty sizable fund balance, and I'm just wondering, this is probably more for Steve, why, why we wouldn't pay for that uh, type of plan out of that fund balance, and I don't, I mean, there might be some um, accounting reasons for it, but I thought that it looked like there was a fund balance, or I thought I remember hearing that there was a fairly sizable fund balance still in Parks and Rec. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, then that answers the question. You're talking about in their grant fund? Um, Which specific, so there's no fund balance in the general fund mm -hmm. relative to planning. So in their grant fund where they get Brownfield Authority money and other things, there's, there is a fund balance that's on page D13. Some of those monies are most likely, I don't know this off the top of my head, but most likely are gonna be earmarked for some kind of usage based on their funding source. I can, I'll follow no, up on that I'm talking about Parks and Rec. Parks Pardon? and Rec, oh, Parks and Recreation. I'm talking about planning, I'm sorry. No, 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 the Parks and Recreation I'm sorry. has I'm sorry. a, uh, I'm sorry. I thought they had a fund balance okay, of about $2 million. Excuse me. <laughs> they do have a fund balance. Okay. Um, what we typically use that for <laughs> is for operations specific to the operation of the park, hmm. where in my mind, a master plan or creation of a master plan is more of an administrative function that would fall under either the exec's office or in this case the planning department. Okay, so it was just basically a choice based on your experience with right. uh, where yeah, it should so that, be coming that out of. Development of a plan doesn't specifically relate to the day-to-day -day operations of the park. That's, that's okay. the reason. But, but then again, the, the fund balance isn't necessarily designated for just the day-to-day -day operations. It could be used if, in general if you thought that it would be better coming from that. It's not like you couldn't use it if you needed to, right? I mean, it's not. That's correct. Okay. And most of the fund balance in that fund is from the IT, um, Hillside Settlement a few years right. ago. Okay. It, and that's fine. I and just so didn't know it's, what. It's all the, you know, whether we want to use it fun, in yeah. there or use funds in mm. from the fund balance of the park fund for, no. Great. you know, improvements at the park for example right. okay thanks and then um generally speaking based on just being here for all these years and seeing like every um every year we plan and steve plans conservatively and all these things come up it seems like it's just um so that being said i i, I don't like seeing generally uh new positions at this point when we're when our general fund is going you know at this yeah. point the wrong way obviously we have there's a plan to you know turn that back around and there's a reason for it. But in the meantime, I really don't like seeing new positions come out in general. However, when they come out of a, uh, a plan in a department like, part, or like um, planning and economic development where I actually, I, I think you've shown uh, the board, you you've, you've spoke to it on different seminars and, and we can actually see that the return on new people is, uh, is there. And I, so I, I just want to say that, although generally I have to question some positions that might be recommended, um, I, I like it when you come in and, although you don't have a specific revenue source to make up for this, the, the fact of uh, all of the work that you guys are doing, and maybe even you know, evidenced in two uh, big plans with the Brownfield development and, um, and hopefully the F-35 project, it, it does show that there is uh, certainly a return on investment in, uh, in in addition of some positions. So I just wanted to mention that to you and thank you for the good job that you're doing. Appreciate it. No doubt. Very good, Commissioner. 
Anyone else on the first round? On the second round, Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you. Real quick, uh, F-35, can you give us an update? Where yeah, we're I had a chance to speak to General Slocum this past weekend. Currently, we are looking at a proposed decision date from the DOD and Air Force on September the 30th. Uh, we have been working closely with a gentleman by the name of John Simmons who works for a company out of D.C. called the Roosevelt Group. He is the chief lobbyist hired by the Michigan Defense Center and the MEDC to advocate for this initiative at a state level. I can assure you that every single chief decision maker that is going to be in that room has heard an exhausting amount of information about Macomb County and Selfridge. I feel that from a community-based and partnership model, we've done everything we physically possibly can to get this aircraft to Selfridge Air National Guard Base. Um, where we currently stand is some intricacies with regards to the whole notion of active fighter wings, the phasing out of aircraft, whether it's an A-10, an F-16, what's currently at, at the base is. Uh, there were some discussions about geese. Uh, we assured them that we'd kill every single geese possible if that was the reason that we weren't getting out your helping. Um, but um, while we are, are cautiously optimistic, uh, there is no way that we can speak to any certainty, but uh, every single thing from the chiclet chart that we got that showed a bunch of green, which is good for us, to what we're hearing from some of the insiders lead us to believe that we're trending in the right direction, and we'll be hopeful to have a, a successful announcement sometime in the near future. I hear we all get bomber jackets when that happens, too, so. Yeah. That, too. Thank you, Mr. Chair, again, for recognizing me a second time. JP, just uh, the master plan for the parks again. Yes, sir. Would it be fair to say the, the primary benefit, or at least one of the major primary benefits, would be that it would allow us to leverage, uh, it would give us better leverage for grants that we could bring in additional revenues that we could use toward the parks? We don't get money from the state unless we have an updated and certified plan by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Our plan was last written in 2014. If we spend 2018 to update that plan, by 2019 we could submit that plan and make sure there's a seamless transition into us being eligible for trust fund grants, passport grants, and other special funds through the DNR and DEQ. Okay, so I guess uh, my follow-up question that would be back to Steve, if, if the value of uh, rewriting this plan is to ensure that we are up to date and eligible for grants, why would we take that out of the fund balance, or the, rather the, uh, you know, the, the park and recreation fund balance, it makes perfect sense to take it out of there because we're using it to leverage more money for the park. It'll it'll provide for the needs of the park. That's you know, or the parks. That, that's sort of the goal. So it seemed that we could just take that money out of the fund balance instead of appropriating additional new monies for it. I guess what I would say to that is. Um, I can certainly follow up and go back and have a conversation with the exec's office, but again, the idea was to keep as much money in there for future improvements at the park. Well, we'll generate future improvements for the park if well, we yeah. leverage grants, and we might be able to you know, save some money in the budget by using the money in the fund balance, which it could be used for. I mean, it's sort of, it seems to me like a logical use for it, but... Yeah, would, I'll follow up with OCE. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner, if, if I may jump sure. in on that too. I think one of the interesting things when we look at the whole notion of capital dollars that could be in a fund, specifically when we look at the whole notion of those DNR trust fund grant dollars, it is a competitive process in which a local match needs to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that we have some form of surplus here, whether it's through a capital fund, whether it's through, um, you know, as we're looking at more opportunities with uh, non-motorized elements, working closely with Brian and his staff, those capital funds are going to be needed as we're looking for more enhanced asks. As we're getting more refined in the way that we're navigating a lot of these parks waters, we're starting to see that there is a hyper-competitive arena. And if there's an opportunity for us to leverage administrative dollars versus capital dollars, I think that's one of the things that could benefit us down the future. But you're absolutely right as far as how you prioritize those fund balances is something that can very much be discussed and understand how it's optimized. Sure, I mean, just my limited understanding of it sounds that to some degree, this fund balance is almost like a one-time deal with the result of the uh, Freedom Hill lawsuits and that sort of thing. And it sounds like this, a smart thing to do would be to take that money and leverage it with the, uh, with the update of the plan to get more resources. But I understand. It's a question of, you know, does that limit our ability to, you know, I just think it's something that should be considered. I mean, rather, because we're already asking for more personnel in the budget. You know, we do have a sub very substantial increase in this budget over the last few years. And so any way we can trim that down while still getting the value is, is important to look at. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. 
Yeah, the only question I got, John, who is our biggest competitor uh, as from the, uh, with the airplane, with the fighter jets? So uh, the way that we've looked at it is we feel that this is a two-man race between us and Truex Air Force Base in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. When you look at the five bases that are being considered, Selfridge and Truex are the only two bases considered in the north where you would have four seasons training and testing. Boise is kind of the outlier on the west side of the country, and then you have um, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and Jacksonville, Florida being considered kind of for those southern bases. So we think it's, an, it's a two-man race between Selfridge and Truex. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Could we round up their geese and ship them to Truex? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else on the budget? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Taking out any of the questions? Can you just answer my question? Okay. All right. Need a motion to receive and file. We'll move. Commissioner Sauger, Commissioner Leonetti. All those in favor, please vote. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.